Now let us continue with this victorious crusade against these worthless mutants and their deranged owners. Now it is impossible for me to report on dog attacks without feeling motivated to rant as well because these stories just infuriate me that much. And whenever I start talking about this dog culture, I just get fired up, right? A child and father were both attacked by their own Rottweiler. A witness said the attack happened as the family was outside walking the dog, right? You can imagine. It was a nice, beautiful day, nice family moment with the loving pooch. And it starts mauling the child. Witness said there were people carrying the guy out and they set him on the curb. There was blood all over his arm. And then the lady came out holding the baby and the baby was screaming. They wrapped up the baby's head. The dog appeared calm, seemingly unaware of what had just happened. Neighbors said they never knew the dog to be aggressive and are shocked by the violence. Now, I want to focus on this statement right here. As usual, they had to throw in some type of statement in defense of the dog. This happens a lot in media and it is very important to call these people out on it because they carry out their own agenda doing this. It is a very important aspect of their propaganda, right? To try to humanize dogs and project the attack as some sort of abnormal freak accident as I mentioned before some freak accident that involves behavior that is unusual for dogs I mentioned how the media simply reports what happened in dog attacks and they avoid dealing with the character of the dog right in the same way they describe dogs as beloved or loving in these articles where they're projecting dogs in a positive way for having allegedly saved somebody or some other false nonsense. They throw in those words, beloved, precious. They don't do that when they report dog attacks because they would have to use negative descriptions. So they don't use any descriptions at all. But as you see with this article, even when they're reporting on a dog attack, Right? They, they actually make statements about the dog's character. But when they do, it is a positive statement. Trying to make this dog seem as if it had some type of blackout. Just like they throw in words like loving and beloved in positive articles, instead of statements like this one that reads, A witness said, the attack happened as the family was outside walking the dog. It should read, a witness said, the attack happened as the family was outside walking the dangerous dog. The vicious dog. Right? That's how it should read. The violent dog. They avoid balanced reporting like the plague. Because even the media is dog bias. Just imagine if that had been me or some other man with a deadly weapon, a knife. And we attacked a toddler and the toddler's father. Stabbed him. They would say things like the violent man, the out of control attacker. Right? Here they wrap up the story with a statement projecting the dog as having some temporary insanity where it blacked out and was not aware of what it was doing. Don't be surprised if they try to 
rehome this mutt. Just like they're trying to do with the Husky that bit that boy's arm off a few weeks ago. Another incident. Another Rottweiler attacked a six-year-old girl. Family had rented a home, showed up to sign the contract and get the keys. The article says they were greeted by a Rottweiler as they got out of the car. It says the old man that lives there assured them that the dog was friendly and that there was nothing to fear. The dog, he says the dog sniffed me and his oldest daughter, but didn't do anything. So they went inside of the home, but they left the six-year-old inside of the car. Right, the six-year-old never got out of the car. So when they signed the contract, got the keys, came back outside, they noticed that the dog had gotten inside the car with the six-year-old and was sniffing her face. The dog, of course, then attacked her. He fought the dog off, grabbed his daughter, tried to run away, but the dog, of course, followed and continued to attack the child, mauled her arm and her leg, assumed it mauled her leg as he was trying to run away with the girl. That's the behavior of a demonic creature, not a loving creature. I want to keep that in your face. It needs to be emphasized. The true nature of these creatures is evil, not good, not loving. People actually create organizations to help these creatures. It is disgusting. Dogs love to attack kids. This is a fact. No matter how many reports we hear you will have these idiotic dog nuts who insist on bringing these creatures around their kids, into their homes, purchasing a dog, even though they have kids, trying to make a friendship between dogs and kids. People like this deserve to be despised. These dog nuts, this is an utter act of immorality, criminality child endangerment at the highest level. You heard the common phrase of how the dog is friendly. You know, you go into a dog lover's home. They didn't tell you they have one. You don't find out till you get inside the home and here's come charging at you. And here comes that phrase. Oh, don't worry. It's friendly, right? Well, that's the same thing he hit them with. The dog is friendly. It's always a moment of Russian roulette that someone has forced onto you in these situations, especially when they conceal the fact that they have the dog and out of nowhere, here comes the dog in the room. And of course, the dogs always violate your personal space, violates you, jumps all over you, and the owner does nothing. They'll sit back and find it amusing. And here in this situation, the man and his daughter got attacked. You can imagine dog nuts when they hear that phrase as they see a dog running up on them. Right away, a smile jumps on their face. Oh, the precious pooch is friendly. And then that mutt starts mauling them. Different expression now, right? Disgusting. Never go inside of these people's homes. I also read a story posted about four or five days ago about a two-year-old that was killed by two Rottweilers, right? Rottweilers have a streak going on. These Rottweilers had escaped from a neighbor's fence. Yet another day, another child gets attacked by a dog or multiple dogs. But right beneath this article, there was this article, Puppy Saved by Firemen. It says, this puppy's reaction to being saved by a fireman will melt your heart. And when you watch the video, as soon as he pulls the dog out 
from the rocks. The dog tries to get away from him. He's pulling the dog against his body to keep it from running away from him. Basically hugging the dog. And he has his face down. He's offering his face to the dog because he is trying to get the dog to lick his face on camera. He's trying to get some loving moment after he rescued the mutt. All that dog thinking about is getting away. These people have to force these bizarre, weirdo, dog love moments onto the public, into reality. It's all about deception. The dog is begging for food. They try to translate that into it showing you affection. Dog in a video moving erratically, as dogs do, as if they should be on Ritalin. They're hyperactive creatures because of their deformed, mutated brains. So after they report on the boy being killed, they want to keep dog lovers' loyalty and love. They want to make up for it. So they hit them with this story about a worthless mutt being saved. Now, that dog will have the opportunity to maul someone's child. Right? Good job. Had you let that worthless mutt stay under those rocks, it would increase child safety. That's simply a fact. This fireman did a huge disservice to society. That is simply a fact. For every predator, there are prey animals, animals that they focus on attacking. And there are enemy animals that they are always fighting. Children are without a doubt prey and enemy animals for dogs. In a crowd of adults and toddlers, they will target the toddlers. This is a fact. It's well known that you never leave a child alone with a dog. But it has nothing to do with those kids provoking the dog. How many stories have I reported in the past three or four days or, or weeks where dogs spotted kids and attacked them? How many stories about dogs attacking babies? They can't walk or talk or crawl. Impossible to provoke the dog. But as soon as the adults leave or fall asleep, the dog mauls the baby. I did a report not long ago where that exact scenario took place. They tell you not to leave kids alone with dogs because dogs view them as enemies, as prey animals, enemy animals. They don't even try to eat kids or babies. They just want to kill them. It's the same type of killing that takes place with lions and hyenas. Lions usually don't eat hyenas unless they're very hungry. They're usually just exercising dominance and getting rid of competition. And in this case, the dog views babies and kids as competition for food. Now, you really have to be foolish to rescue or help a creature like that. I don't care if a mutt spontaneously combusts right in front of me and I'm standing there with a bucket of water. I would not throw one drop of water onto that worthless mutt. It does not matter if a dog has never attacked anyone. People like to bring that up. My dogs never attacked anyone. That's irrelevant. It is in them. No matter what your dog has done in the past, it's in them to do it. It's their nature, their instinct. Jeffrey Dahmer, other serial killers, they didn't kill every person they came into contact with. But because it was in their nature to kill people, they were executed. And nobody complained about it. Look at how dogs in these shelters have it written in their description that it needs an owner without kids, right? It needs to be around adults only because they are wired to maul and attack kids and babies. 
You have to be stupid and just a disgusting person to fall in love with a creature like that. This wired to maul your young. Again, nothing to do with kids violating or provoking their dog. They try to blame the attacks on the kids to conceal the dog's true demonic nature and to divert attention away from their own irresponsibility of owning the dog and keeping it around their child. And they all work together, all these dog nuts, to maintain this culture of concealment. Look at the boy who had his arm bitten off a few weeks ago. Initially, a woman tried to blame the child. She literally made up a lie that the boy put a sock over his arm and stuck it through the bottom of a fence trying to play with that mutt. You can't talk sense into these people. They know full well that dogs love to maul kids and they simply don't care. Someone posted a link to a blog written by some dog nut who is ridiculing this couple who got rid of their dog, took it to a shelter because the woman was about to have a baby. Right? Ridiculing them for getting rid of the dog for their baby. Look at what she wrote. Dogs are loyal companions and would never abandon their family. That's a lie. Dogs run away from their owners all the time. She says they can adjust to change and should not be thought of as disposable. Trying to tell these people how they should think, how they should view dogs. Even though dogs attack babies and kids every day on a regular basis. The entire post in this woman's blog reads the exact same way these news reports read. Phrases like, save the innocent pup. The betrayed pup needed time to trust humans again. How was this dog betrayed? People giving this mutant free shelter, free medical care, free food. And if they decide to stop wasting money on it, then the dog nuts call that betrayal. The money that was being spent on that dog will now be redirected to the newborn. And they call that betrayal. These people probably realize how disgusting and worthless that mutt truly is. And it dawned on them that they are designed to be parents to human babies only. Only. Those dogs have parents. And their parents are not human. Probably dawned on them they need to spend their money on their own baby rather than waste it on a worthless mutant that will not grow into anything that they can be proud of. A doctor, a lawyer, anything that will provide services to society and help society grow and develop. All dogs do is freeload on humans and society until the day they die and leave humans and society in debt. Nothing in return. Always be aware of these articles and how they're written. These people are always trying to defend dogs. This is a true bona fide cult. Cult from hell. This is no different of a cult than any other cult that existed any time in history. This one is probably even more massive because of our greater population than there was in the past. I don't care what period you're talking about, the Dark Ages, whatever. This is probably the most massive cult in history, and it is definitely a bona fide cult. So watch these reports when they report dog attacks. Always look out for the moments where the writer is actually defending the dog. That is serious propaganda.
They're putting it right in your face that they are a cult, an evil cult. The media is full of dog nuts. And they've been free to run this propaganda for decades without any objection. Those days are over.